rich history of this place owes much to its geographical location. Located in the borderlands, the gateway from the Carpathian Mountains to the lowland plains, on the navigable Sand River, which of course created great trade opportunities. And that is why this town, Chemischl, grew up. I'm standing here in the Market Square in Chemischl at the beginning of our journey, a journey through history which takes us from the end of the Roman Empire to the end of the Second World War. A rich history of people, of buildings, of institutions. Join me on Poland Daily History as we see Chemischl above ground and below ground. Casimir the Great had such a large impact on the, this region of course it was the time when the, the, the Chemists were sort of became firmly established as part of Poland without the, as we heard earlier, the toing and froing between the various borders. Following the death of Casimir the Great in 1370, I understand that a couple of Anjou kings became kings of Poland. Would you say a few words about how that came about. W roku 1374 na tronie Polski zasiada Ludwik Węgierski. In the year 1374, the Polish throne is occupied by Louis I of Hungary. This is related to the events from 34 years earlier when Casimir the Great spoke with Bolesław Jerzy II about inheritance on the topic of marriage. Louis I of Hungary reigns only eight years and dies in the year 1382. Two years after his death, in 1394, Jadwiga is crowned King of Poland. This is a rather interesting event, as not once in the entire history of Poland did such an event take place. Poland also sought allies and subsequently found an ally in the Lithuanians. Thus, a year after Jadwiga's coronation, in 1385, the Polish-Lithuanian Union was established in Krewo. One year later, a Lithuanian, Władysław Jagiełło, is crowned King of Poland. Subsequently, Jadwiga becomes the Queen of Poland. Although Poland was baptized in the 10th century, Lithuania remained a pagan land. In 1387, while Władysław Jagiełło left to baptize Lithuania, Jadwiga stayed in Poland. She descended from a Hungarian dynasty and her sister was extremely tempted to conquer Przemysl. In 1387, Jadwiga's sister set off towards Przemysl but stopped near a small village of Stubno, which was located around 300 kilometers from the center of Przemysl. At the time, Jadwiga had also set off in the same direction to stop her sister and the Hungarian forces. She was successful. In honor of these events, a small mound was to be erected in the village of Stubno, which could possibly cause another expansion of the Hungarians in the areas. Interesting. And I'm just I'm thinking also, I, I seem to remember reading somewhere that at the Battle of Grunwald, yeah. they, the banner of the city of Chemisa was seen. Mm -hmm. And I also heard, which I probably imagine is, is a, an exaggeration, that 60% of the knights at the battle were from, were from the greater Chemisa region. Do you think that's a true story? Is that just a legend which locals like to... Yes. Such information does appear on the internet. It could have been that around 60% of the troops from the present-day Podkarpatia region, although historically these are the Małopolska regions, could have taken part in the Battle of Grunwald. Is this true? For us, it would be
be a great splendor if it were true. However, we try to be more skeptical about it. Przemysl itself did, in fact, want to honor those who participated in the Battle of Grunwald, as the banner of Przemysl took part in the battle. This motivated a plaque commemorating the event to be revealed on the 500th anniversary of the battle. This is also quite interesting, as the plaque itself was not revealed during the anniversary in July, but in October or November, as the architect Professor Rashek simply did not manage to meet the deadline. Myślę, że jest to interesująca rzecz z tego względu, że sam pomnik, sama tablica, przepraszam, została odsłonięta nie w miesiącu lipcu, wtedy kiedy faktycznie. The plaque itself, however, is connected to a very interesting event, namely the 1st of October in 1389, when Władysław Jagiełło and his wife Jadwiga entered the city of Przemyśl and granted the city its rights. He was welcomed by Bishop Eric from Vincen, as well as the authorities of the city of Przemyśl. This is a nice story. However, Władysław Jagiełło, in fact, never stepped foot in Przemyśl. He, instead, preferred the village of Medyka. He visited it 13 times or so, and that 13th time was simply unlucky. In 1434, he caught a cold on his way to Lviv in the town of Grudek. Unfortunately, this is when he passed away. Grudek Jagieloński, dzisiejszy Grodok, tam niestety kończy swoje, swoje życie. Miasto Przemyśl w wieku piętnastym the city of Przemyśl was not particularly developed in the 15th century. The next two centuries allow for the growth of the city. Let's also remember that Przemyśl was constantly harassed by invasions. As mentioned earlier, the city took part in around 100 wars in the span of a thousand years. It was constantly being destroyed and burned to the ground. This was also when the city was mostly made of wood. One of the largest invasions was in the the year 1498. The city was then invaded by the Valachians. Sometimes this is incorrectly interpreted. It was a Turkish invasion. It is said that this was the first invasion of the Turks into Polish lands, and they simply chose the city of Przemyśl. The inhabitants, or persons connected with this history, will always cultivate this event. In the temple, the Franciscan church, there is a fresco commemorating this event and in it we can see the murder of monks in the market of the city. It is something special, something never before seen in the city of Przemyśl. The more we dive into the city's history, the more ongoing action we will see.